Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. Today I have prepared three true-false questions for you. As usual, I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve each problem on your own, choose the correct answer, and when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. So here is the first question. The closer the gene's location to the tip of the chromosome, the greater the likelihood that crossing over will occur. If it is true or false, and this is true. So imagine that uh, here is a chromosome and here is centromere and uh, in the region around centromere chromosome uh, has repetitive um, DNA that uh, and in this region Crossing over almost doesn't occur, but uh, crossing over can happen anywhere uh, in other places on the chromosome. For example, this may happen here, and of course, these two uh, fragments would change places. So uh, this one would take place here, and another would uh, take place of another chromosome. But also this may happen uh, at the different uh, region. For example, if I drew the same pair of chromosomes, uh, such um, crossing over may happen here. Once again, uh, the closer gene to the tip, the more chances that uh, uh, gene that is close to the tip would end up on the other homologous chromosome. And uh, yet another example where crossing over may happen very close to the end. As you see, uh, still uh, the gene that is very close to the tip would uh, change places, but uh, those that is closer to uh, centromere would have less and less chances. So, uh, we can say that on general, uh, the closer gene to the tip, the greater um, chances that uh, it would uh, exchange uh, its uh, location and would end up on the uh, other homologous chromosome and the closer uh, gene to the centromere the more chances that uh, gene uh, wouldn't uh, participate in crossing over. So, uh, next question. Triploidy occurs when a normal gamete fuses with um, diploid gamete to form a zygote that is uh, triploid. Is it true or false? And this is also true. Imagine that we have model organism with only uh, two chromosomes, so one chromosome and another homologous chromosome, but I would use different color. So uh, when this diploid organism with only one chromosome that is present in two copies uh, would undergo meiosis, uh, this uh, organism would produce two types of um, gametes. So here we would find this chromosome and in another type of gamete we would find another uh, chromosome. So uh, gametes, as you see, would be haploid and organism here is diploid. Now imagine that we have uh, organism that is tetraploid. And what does it mean? Uh, actually, many plants can be tetraploid and the same chromosome can be present in uh, four copies. Uh, we do not see such situation with um, animals, but in uh, plant world, uh, this is normal. Many plants are uh, tetraploid, hexaploid, even octaploid. So, uh, how many different variants of gametes uh, exist 
for this organism. Of course, uh, gametes of this organism would have uh, half the number of chromosomes, meaning two. And uh, let's use uh, letters for each type of chromosome, for example, uh, G for green, R for red, and W for white, and B for blue. The first variant of the gamete would contain green chromosome and red chromosome. The second variant would have green chromosome and white chromosome. The third variant would have green chromosome and um, blue chromosome. So B. Uh, second set of variants may have uh, red chromosome and white chromosome and also may have red chromosome and blue chromosome. Uh, we already list uh, variant with green and red. So uh, two variants here and uh, we also may have uh, white chromosome and blue chromosome. We do not list uh, white chromosome and red because we have already it here. We do not list uh, white and green because we have it here. And uh, this is going to be all our variants. So this is going to be six variants of the gametes that uh, this tetraploid organism can produce. So now uh, I'm not going to list all of these variants here. So imagine uh, that uh, this organism have produced uh, one variant with uh, white and red uh, um, chromosome and uh, once again all these chromosomes are homologous and another variant with red and blue and uh, during uh, fertilization these two gametes fuse together and form zygote and as you see zygote going to be triploid many plants are triploid uh, most of them are made artificially by uh, people. For example, many watermelons, that is seedless watermelons, are triploid. Banana are triploid. Many pears are triploid. So many um, fruits that you see seedless, that normally should have seeds, most likely are triploid. And of course, uh, triploid now zygote start to divide and form triploid organism. And you may also ask that I didn't list here all the possible variants. For example, uh, we have um, C, B or green and blue, but we don't have blue and green. But actually uh, in the cell there is no such thing as left, right, top, bottom. And if two chromosomes are present in the nucleus, for example, green and blue, this is the same as uh, blue and green. So, as you understand, in the nucleus, everything can change places. So, uh, I just list here unique combinations. And there are six unique combinations when we have four homologous chromosomes. And next uh, question or statement, humans have 23 different types of chromosomes. Is it true or false? And this time this is false statement. If you take a closer look to this picture, you would see 23 pairs of chromosomes, but 22 of them are the same or homologous and X and Y chromosome are, as you see, not the same. So we have 22, 23, 24 different chromosomes. 
So those we have 23 um, pairs of chromosomes. Actually, we have 24 different types of chromosomes. That's why this uh, statement is false. And this is all for today. If you have any questions, if you have uh, problems to solve, you may post underneath uh, any of my videos and I will try to solve them and post video as soon as possible. And uh, see you in the next video. Goodbye.